All right, so we are going to go into the folder that says in class examples. And there's two documents there. The top one that says accounting transaction example, that's what I headed out to you. It's the, it's the Karen Carter business. But let's open the one up right below that. The accounting transaction template. I already have it open here, so let me go back in there, see if it'll come up here. <coughs> now when you open it up, everybody find it okay? You might be on this financial statement tab, now that we just finished Excel. I want you to click on the transactions tab instead. So as you open it up to start with, it's probably on this one. <clears throat> I'll stay here for one second. This is a balance sheet. Up above there's the income statement. So once we walk through those transactions, we'll come back to here and put this together, okay? So to start with though, we're gonna start with the transactions that Karen started with her business, and I'm going to kind of walk through this together. And we'll see if we can figure out where these transactions go. Now remember what happens is, when we plug one number in somewhere on this, there has to be the same number on the other side. Sometimes maybe positive, maybe negative, we'll kind of walk through that too. All right, so to start with, on August 3rd, Karen started her own consulting business. She invested $5,000 from her savings. So to start with, we're gonna start with $5,000. <coughs> if she invested her own money in exchange for stock, we probably can assume she created an asset for herself. So we're gonna put $5,000 in that very first square. So she issues stock to herself to form a corporation. And she took money out of her savings account to do so. <coughs> So where might we put the other $5,000 if she issues stock to herself to start a business? I would believe so. She created common stock for herself, right? So remember, we want to make sure these numbers kind of coordinate as we go through this kind of, these lines have to balance as we go through here. All right? How yep. come it would be stock and not dividends? She, well, if she pays herself a dividend at the end of the year, oh, then we'll okay. a dividend. I got yeah. it. And also see we have an asset or a liability or an equity. So it's got to go in one of these three. Right. Two. And I was just wondering. And we'll see dividends later on. So good question. Okay, the next thing that she does, went to the bank, and she obtained a loan for $20,000. So what did the bank give her? No. Nope. Yeah. So it could, we could put it two places. Let's start with they actually gave her cash for the business, right? So let's put the $20,000 that the bank gave her, although in reality, the bank didn't sit there and count out 20,000 in cash, right? They put it in a bank, a bank account. <clears throat> One of you mentioned a note, correct? Mm -hmm. That's what she created. So let's put the other 20,000, she just created a liability for herself, right? Okay, she has to pay that note back. So far, so good? All right, then she had to go pay for office space for eight fifty. So what did she use to pay the lease? Cash. Cash, right? Yeah. So this time we put that cash amount in. If she paid it out, we better put it in as a negative, right? So negative 850, oops. Now that's an accounting thing. When I put the little dash in front of 850, and put it in parentheses. That's just the way accounting thinks with um, negative numbers. So she created a negative asset. What else did she create then? Expense. Very good, expense. But let's not put that as a negative. Now think about that. Your personal expenses, those are whole positive numbers. You don't have a negative expense. So just don't get too caught up that that was negative. Shouldn't this be negative? No, it's okay. All right, very good. Then she went to Office Depot and bought some furniture and office supplies, but she didn't pay cash on it. 
So we're going to do two entries on the office line. How much did she get in office supplies? Oh, furniture was first. So that one should be pretty easy. Office furniture is $5,000, right? Mm -hmm. And her office supplies was $900. So she didn't pay cash for those. How then are we going to record the rest of that transaction? How about not nose cable? Counts cable. There you go. Cable. Right? The difference is? It's not a loan. Yeah. Very good. It's not a loan. So counts payable goes into 5900 We know it's still balancing. <coughs> All right. Then she had to go pay for some advertising. She paid cash for 500 bucks. So what are we going to do to pay that cash in advertising? Positive or negative? Negative. Very good. Yep, because she pulled that money out of her bank, 500 bucks out. All right, so then what's the other half of that transaction that she paid for advertising? Expenses. Very good, very good. $500 in expenses. Okay, now this whole thing of Karen's business, she's a consultant. So now finally, she performed her consulting magic, whatever that means. Um, she billed the customer at $1,500. So she billed someone for her services. So how are we going to record this? They haven't paid her yet. Accounts receivable. Very good. Accounts receivable. We hope they're going to pay her, right? Mm -hmm. They may not. So if that's the first half of our transaction is that she's got some consulting fees, what's the other half going to be? Revenue. Good. Revenue. That's what she does for a living is consulting so that she can count that as revenue. Even though she hasn't got paid for it yet, she still counts it as a revenue. Which seems kind of confusing. Like, shouldn't I have the money before I say it's revenue? Well, in our minds, yes. But in counting, no. We can count it before I actually get the money in our hands. Okay, the next one should be easy. More accounting. Well, this one had some more issues. I always think Karen's a, like a psychologist counselor. So she's building this next guy, 1700 bucks. The other guy can must have some problems, right? So 7200 is accounts paid and receivable, and then more income coming in, more revenue coming in. <clears throat> Okay, finally though, yay, at the end of the month, one of those two has paid her some cash. Or paid her $300. So I kind of just gave part of the answer away. So if they paid her, where's $3,500 going to go? Cash. Yep. They paid her in cash. Okay, what's the other part of that transaction going to be then? Here's a hint, it's going to be negative. So it'll be your revenue then? Negative. It's not revenue. It's a good guess. If one of her clients that she billed finally paid her, what can we reduce then? Your accounts receivable. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Right? Because this is now less because they paid us. Mm -hmm. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. They haven't paid us all yet. There's a still a little bit of money outstanding. So and this is negative. We hope that they'll pay us. Now one thing you think, okay, why is that negative? If nothing else, think about this is both an asset to offset itself. It's all an asset. So that's kind of why one's negative and one's positive. To make a balance. In other words, the 300, the 3500 isn't a liability We're over here. So that's why it's negative and positive. It kind of cancels the assets out. Okay. Oh, now she's paying Office Depot. So she's going to pay Office Depot. Where does our transaction start? What you going to pay them with? Cash. Very good. Now, positive or negative? Negative. Right? Negative because she's paying money out of her bank to go pay <coughs> Office <coughs> Depot. So what are we going to do with their other half of that transaction? Think about where we started with Office Depot. Very good. <coughs> It'll also be negative, right? Very good. 
and I'll explain that in one second. <coughs> so she oaks office depot a little bit less. Question? Basically you're making it negative because it's like you're making a payment. So Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Negative, negative because this kind of counter itself out too. Negative, negative asset, negative liability. Yep. So that's why I'm kind of confused with the negative positive. Think about which column is going. You just want to subtract it from the total that's there because you made that payment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Just like you pay an office depot for stuff you bought. If you have less cash, we owe them less money. And it has to be on both sides. It has to be on both so sides. Cool thing yep. And we'll see when we get through this how it all has to balance itself out. So then we hope we did it right. Okay, then she has to go pay her utility bill, which was 220 bucks. So if you're paying utility, how do you record your utility bills? Cash. Yep, cash is going to be negative 220. Very good. Negative 220. Oops. <coughs> and what's the other half of that? Expenses. Expenses. Yep. Just like expenses we had before, it's still going to be positive because she's, she's accruing more expenses. So that's why that number stays positive. Okay, then she had to go pay the bank loan. Just all she paid in her loan to the bank was interest. All right. So that's a little confusing because how we recorded to start with was a notes payable. She only paid her interest. When you go to the bank and borrow money, this is your principal, right? Interest is what the bank's charging you on that. So this column, spoiler alert, is not affected by this transaction because she didn't pay the loan down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. She just paid the interest. So we know she paid interest. What are we going to do with that cash? Negative. Yep, negative. 150. So then what did she create by paying that? What's the other half of that transaction? It's not going to be notes payable. It's, expense. it's an expense. Very good. It's an interest expense. So pop that over there as 150. And then, now remember, Karen is a corporation, so she's pretty much paying herself a dividend which is kind of weird. But she's going to pay, after this great month of work she had, a dividend of $3,000. So what's the first half of that transaction? Cash. Yep. And it's going to be negative. Very good. Negative 3000 And then what's the other half going to be? Very good. A positive dividend. <coughs> All right, any questions on any of those transactions? Again, is the word you work through on your own for homework, it's kind of similar to this. I think if you can kind of think through how we did this, I think it'll be fine. All right, now let's try our, ex our Excel practice here. Mm -hmm. We want to add these up. So I'm going to start right down here. And you may already know this. I'm going to show you my trick. If you know this, just say, yeah, I already know that. There's an auto sum button up here. It's that little Roman. I don't know, alpha, whatever it is. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you click on that little guy right there, okay, it found some numbers to add up, but Excel only sees this group of numbers. I want all of this. So I'm going to come in there and change that 13 to B5. So we want it to add up B5 through B17. You see what I'm doing there? And then it highlights, this is what I'm going to add up. Hit enter. Okay, if you know how to do this, I'm sorry I'm making this sound stupid. Okay, this is my other trick. Everybody get 21880? Mm -hmm. Let me do that's right. Okay. Grab this little gray square. Do you see that little gray square? Mm -hmm. Drag it all the way over there to the last one. And it adds all those up for you. Okay, does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. Now you'll see these little pound symbols here. You can just go in there and delete those. Excel tried to add up there, but there's nothing for it to add up, so just delete those little pound symbols. <coughs> Alright, so now we're going to see okay, if we can find. The little drag. You want to show her? See me help her. 
is not a clear measure. And I'll tell you, sometimes it's a little different on Mac. Who might have part of it too? <laughs> you know, we should probably do before we get too far into this. We should probably save this. Mine says read only. You never know. I'm going to do file save as. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop here. But only because you just never know what may happen. Power goes out or something. <coughs> All right, then we have to figure out how much total assets did Karen have. Now, for those of you that are watching the recording, I'm going to shrink this down for a second so we can see the whole column. But we want to add up in this cell just her assets, which would be those four right there. So I'm going to put in that cell an equal sign. And just to make it easier, I'm going to do B18 plus D18 plus F18 plus H18. Then hit enter. <coughs> Everybody get that okay? And there's, I, there's easier ways to do that, but just for simplicity stake. I did equal sign B18 plus D18 plus, I guess that's F18 plus H18. And you get 32,980. Mm -hmm. Everybody got that number okay? Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing in the total liabilities. So for total liabilities, equal sign to start my formula off. And J18 plus L18. What'd you get there? Everybody got 24,000? <clears throat> All right, now let's kind of play with this. Let's put our equity, we're gonna use this here to figure out the equity and then we're gonna make sure we're right. So in the equity box, equal sign F20 minus N20. And then we're going to make sure it actually is 8980. <coughs> okay? To do that, I just kind of play this a little bit to see if kids, is this really true? <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Let's see, how do we want to do this? I'm going to plug in some numbers here and kind of watch me. So $5,000 was just her common stock. Then I'm going to take out her dividends, minus the $3,000. Then I'm going to add in her revenue. And then I'm going to take out her expenses. And I'm hoping this is going to equal $8,980. All right, so I use these numbers. I gotta get my little cheat sheet here. The equity. Yeah, I wanna make sure that the equity is right because all we, we know that it's right by doing this minus this, but I wanna make sure that actually is right. So I took her common stock minus her dividends, then I added her revenue, then I took out her expenses, and that's how we get 8980. Does that make sense? I just want to double check my math, make sure we did it right. Okay? Because we know, we're pretty sure it's right here, but I want you all to see how we got the 8980 is by what happened over here in the equity column. Common stock minus dividends plus the revenue she made minus her expenses she paid. So we know that's, that's right. Does that make sense? One way to kind of check your math. All right. And that that equals that common stock minus dividends plus revenue minus expense equals which one? Equals this equity, right? Equity. That's how you double check out yeah, equity. Okay. Okay. Yep. okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, ready to move on? Any questions on that? Do you feel pretty good about that? Good enough? Okay. Now we want to go back to 
the financial statements, take this information here and put it into our balance sheet income statement, okay? We kind of have to flip back and forth a little bit. So let's jump into our income state, our financial statements. Scroll up to the top. Make sure you have the income statement. <coughs> and the first thing we want to put in for, for the month, how much service revenue did Carrie make from our business? So to find service revenue, we're going to come back to our transactions and take that total there, 8,700. Okay, does that make sense? That's how much consulting she did for the month. That's her service revenue. So we're gonna put $8,700 right there. <clears throat> and her rent expense, if I show you this, think back to Excel we just did, we just did last week. So rent expense is kind of the same thing. We're gonna go back and find the other worksheet. But put your equal sign in there. Okay, right in that cell where it says rent expense. Jump back to your transactions and just click on the total of the rent expenses, the 1720, hit enter. Now look at what happened on your financial statement, right? You pretty much told it where to get that from. And that's what we see in the formula bar. It's transactions worksheet, cell T18. If you don't want to type it back and forth. Okay, all right. Was that covered in Excel left? I don't think it was. Where, where did you get the 17? Okay, back on transactions. Yeah. It's the expense total, right? Okay, total expenses. Total expenses. Mm -hmm. This number right here, right? That's not. But wouldn't it go? Oh, would just be the rent? It's just the rent. rent. You said rent. Oh, was it just rent? Oh, see, I thought I'd show something really cool. You're right. You're right. We can still do it. Yeah, okay, you can still do it. Like, yeah. Thank you for catching that. No, All right. I'm really confused. I just didn't follow right. up with it. Right. So let's do equal sign rent expense. Which one's rent expense? 850. Okay. I clicked on cell T8. It doesn't matter which one you get it from. Well, it does. Positive number, but I want a negative. Right. Okay. So let's do the same thing for advertising expense. Equal. Jump back to your transactions. And I'm going to click on cell T10. So 500, right? Okay, utilities, equal sign. Um, T15. Okay, interest expense, same thing, equal sign. 150, which is T16. <coughs> <coughs> All right, everybody got those four numbers populated in there. And then we have to add them up. So I'm just going to do equals sum, um, open paren, highlight those four numbers, hit enter. Am I going too fast? Are you guys okay? Yes. Here? No, I screwed up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the number in the wrong spot. Uh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, now that 1720 should look familiar, right? Because I just, my mistake was earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So 1720, there's our total expenses, so that's good too. All right. So how do you think we're gonna calculate net income here? On this worksheet. Revenue minus the expenses. Mm -hmm. Yep, very good. So revenue minus expenses will gonna give us our net income. And we hope it's positive. We hope she had a profitable month. So 8,700 minus G12. So G6 minus G12. Correct. 69.80. Does that number look familiar to you at all? It should because when we were calculating this, it's these two numbers minus each other. So that's how we got that. We saw it down here we were calculating that. So revenue minus expenses, she had a good month. She made a little bit of money, right? <coughs> Questions on the, on the income statement? So it's G6 minus? G12. G12. Yep. And one thing also as I say that, and I don't know if it was anybody here, but 
don't type in the numbers 8700 minus 1720 use the cells instead because if those numbers change then that messes everything up mm -hmm. so use the cells instead all right let's move on to the statement of retained earnings so this is how did Karen do for the month did she keep any earnings did she pay a dividend out that kind of thing we know Karen started out with zero if she opened her business up August 1st so it starts with a zero we'll add our net income which is this right so I'm just going to put a reference in G19 with an equal sign G13 right because those statements flow together okay let's do our equal sign for dividends let's jump back to transactions and grab your dividend number of 3,000 right so she had income she paid a dividend of 3,000 everybody got that okay so how are we going to calculate your retained earnings at the end of the month pretty much yep net income minus her dividends now if there were a number here we would add that in right the zero so if it said five thousand we'd add that in here and then subtract that okay so again she had a pretty good month she made a profit she paid herself a dividend but yeah she was able to retain some earnings okay now this number the 3980 is going to flow down below everybody with me all right, now we gotta do her balance sheet. <coughs> so we'll grab those totals from the transactions worksheet to fill in our cash, accounts receivable, whatnot. So let's start in cell E28. I'll do equal sign. My total cash was a 21,880, right? Okay. Accounts receivable will be equal sign D18. My office supplies equal sign F18. And then my office furniture equal sign H18. Oh, look, <laughs> there's a typo in furniture. Did anybody catch that? That's one thing if you haven't learned anything about Excel, Excel does not spell check until you tell it to, right? So just remember that. I think it's in a review. Yeah. There's spell check. Okay, only one typo. All right, let's do this. Let's select all those numbers. I highlighted um, E28 through E35. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna go to my home tab, hit my auto sum, right? So whatever I highlighted is what's gonna add up for me. That number should look familiar, right? Because we've done something right. It's the same number we had in total assets back in another worksheet. <coughs> okay, let's, everybody with me? How'd you highlight that? I just selected those numbers, oh, okay. just like that, and then hit your auto sum button. Oh, we're now right okay. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, there's more than one way, but sometimes. That's way easier. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, you ready to do accounts payable? All right, equals J18. Nose payable is equal L18. Now we're gonna add those up. We could just highlight what we did before, but the other thing is we want it to go with cell L. So however you wanna do it, I'm gonna be in that cell L 20, I'm just going to do equal, there's only two numbers, J28, whoops, plus J29. That number should look familiar also, right? Because back in our transactions, our liability is 24,000, so we, we're, we're doing pretty good here. Okay, we just have a couple more numbers to fill in here. Um, common stock equal Go back to your transactions, N18. Okay, now think about this before you, let me figure this out. These three statements kind of flow together. 
So we got to figure out a way to find retained earnings. We're just going to take it from up here. All right? So just in that retained earnings cell, just reference cell G21. Okay? Add those two together. And you're going to be in cell L34 again. And J32 plus J33. That number should also look familiar because there's that 8980 from our transactions. So now if you add up, I'm going to do L30 through L35 auto sum. 32980. Now, one thing to remember on the balance sheet as we come back to this equation and the word balance is in it, we feel pretty confident because those balance, right? Right. And that is that. All right, let's save that in case you want to use it later on. I'm going to jump back into Blackboard as you kind of think through this. And I want to make sure as I go look at that homework assignment. Okay, we'll click on the Assignments tab, and when you open up an Excel worksheet, maybe. so for this homework, here's all your statements, cash, accounts, to do blah, 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 and it tells you what to do. Prepare the income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheet, right over here. So you might want to print that out, oh, I don't know, depends on how well you are, I'm jumping back and forth. But the nice thing is for this homework, you don't have to do this part. That first part we did together, all those transactions. You just take what you got here, which is given to you in that list of numbers, and put it into this. So I think you'll be okay. Now, because part of this was, let's walk through those transactions that Carrie did with her business, see how the, she made those numbers, and then put it into the statements. So this, the homework might be easier than this. I think it will be at least. Yeah. Do you feel okay with that? All right. There's a Khan Academy videos out there too if you want to look more on accounting. Um, the Khan Academy is a great video to look at. There's an accounting terminology quiz also next week. Um, questions, thoughts, comments? What do you think? So for the terminology quiz, is that over the terminology yeah. today? Yeah, you have your book and the term, yeah, and a little bit book. of both. Okay. Yeah. And that's the first six chapters, correct? Yeah, yeah. I don't believe there's very many questions on it, so don't can't panic too much. Oh, okay. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Right. When you hear quiz, and some people are, well, I'm one of those, I get a little anxiety when I hear the word quiz or test. Like yeah. 50 terms or something. Right, right. The nice thing is you have Apple time to go get your resources to find it too, so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? <laughs> so we're in week three, which means we're almost halfway done. You feel like this is going to be okay, right? Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you next week when we do economics, don't panic too much. We just learned some basic terminology in economics, so. All right. Well, that's all I have. I'm going to start the recording. You guys have any other questions or what do you think? <laughs>